Um, this is an electrostatics, grade 11 and 12. It says two metal sphere P and Q carrying charges, six, negative 6 nanocoulomb and positive 4 nanocoulomb respectively, are placed 40 centimeter apart along a straight line as shown in the diagram below. So now, here are the two charges. This one is negatively charged. That means that it has an excess of electrons. This one is positively charged. That means it has a lack of electrons or a deficiency of electrons. Now they are placed 4 cm, 40 cm apart. Now 6.1.1, it says sphere Q um, experiences an electrostatic force. Okay, let me dwell on that. These two charges, they're exacting a force on each other. And the force, since they are unlike charges, it's positive and negative, they attract each other, right? They attract each other. There is a force. There is a force that Q exact on, on P. There's a force of Q on P that is going towards Q. And there's a force of, there's a force of, there's a force of P on Q um, towards P. They exact a force on each other and their force, it's equal but in opposite direction. So the force of uh, P on Q, it's negative, it's going in the negative direction, it's equal to the force of what? of Q on P, it's in the positive direction. So they exact a force on each other. That's Newton's third law. Now it says in which direction will um, sphere Q move right down only to the left or to the right? In which direction sphere Q will move? Sphere Q will move to the left. To the left. As I've mentioned there, the sphere Q, its force that it experiences is going to the left. It's a force due to P. Now it says spheres, the spheres are now in contact with each other and then separated. Guys, what happens here? When these two spheres are in contact, this is P and this is Q. And this is negative and this is positive. There's a transfer of electrons here from an axis. Remember the negatively charge, it's an axis of what? Of electrons. And the positively charge has a lack of electrons. So always the transfer of electrons, it comes from the one that is negatively charged to the one that is positively charged. From lack, from axis to lack. Axis to leg all the time. Now it says now where electrons removed from or transferred to P. So the electrons were removed from. So the answer were removed from P as I've mentioned here. They were removed from P the electrons. Now the question 6.1.3 it says calculate the magnitude of the net charge after they separated uh, after the sphere separated so what do they want here they want the two new the new charges so there's a formula that is given also in the formula sheet it says new charge is equal to q1 plus q2 so in this case it's going to be p q p and q2 <laughs> divide by two and then what what are you going to have it's six nanocoulomb which is it's six times ten to the power negative nine plus um what's that it's four times ten to the power negative nine we divide by two so the answer here it's going to be it's going to be two the answer will be negative two divided by two so it will be one times ten to the power negative one times ten to the power nine Coulomb. That's the new charge on each after they have separated. So if you calculate that.
6.2 a third sphere r carrying a charge of um, 8 nanocoulomb is now placed at a distance of 25 centimeter um, of sphere q so now you still have a sphere p and q but one thing that you must remember the sphere p and q they are new charges the one that you just calculated they were brought into contact and then now they became like this so now sphere q it's negative one times 10 to the power negative nine and also sphere p it's negative 1 times 10 to the power negative 9. They are carrying new charges now. They no longer those original charges. Now, um, there's this sphere now that is 8 nanocoulomb, positive 8 nanocoulomb. Um, that is, okay, let me remove this. It's going to create a confusion. Um, I already written there the times 10 to the power times 10 to the power 9 I can I cannot have the nanocoulomb there as well now the question now okay one thing that you must remember these force these charges they exact a force on each other P and Q they exact a force on each other it's equal the force that they exact on each other but in opposite direction even sphere P is exacting a force in, uh, on sphere Q and sphere Q is exacting a force on that. That force is equal but in opposite direction. So now the question 6.2.1 it says state the Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law guys you need to state it according to the exam guideline and it's simple. Now it says draw a vector diagram show and show the electrostatic force and the net force experience uh, by the sphere q due to p and q so the charge of interest now it's q and it's always guys this charge that it's at the right angle if you're looking at here it forms the right angle this is the charge where they're going to ask the electrostatic force so now they want us to draw a vector diagram showing the forces that are experienced by this one but now let's do it roughly here now the f the, the charge the charge p is exacting a force on charge on charge on charge q and that force is going in that direction the force that is experienced by q uh, due to p it's going in that direction that's the force of what of p on q and the charge p is exact is it's experiencing a force um from from okay let me let, let me explain this this is these are negative and negative they repel each other so this one is repelling this one in this direction so this one is pushing this one in that direction and this charge r is is is, is attracting because it's negative and positive so charge r is attracting charge q downwards is attracting it downwards so the force is going to go downwards it's a force of what it's a force of 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 r on q now this question 6.2.2 it wants us to draw a vector diagram but now we have an idea of the direction of the forces so the vector diagram that i'm going to draw now i'm going to use the the tail to tail method so the force of p on q it's going to the right um this is the force of p on Q and the force of of R on Q it's going to go downwards and it's going to be bigger than the force of P on Q due to the distance because this distance between these two forces is 25 and this one between these two fo forces is bigger is 40 so the bigger the distance the smaller the force the smaller the distance the bigger the force so this is a tail to tail um, and then I'll close this parallelogram um, by broken lines and then I draw the resultant from one corner to another corner. So this is the force of what? Of R on Q. And this is the what? The F res. It's a resultant force. And then the direction of that resultant force is going to be an angle there. Alternatively, I can draw it like this and do the tail to head method or head to tail method. So there's that force there 
um, this is the force of what? Um, this is the force of P on Q. And then it's a force of... And then it's a force of... This is the force of R on Q. And then the resultant, it's always from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. The resultant is going to go like this. So this is the what? This is the resultant force and the angle, it's going to be there. So that's the same thing. You achieve the same marks for both. That's 6.2.2. Now 6.2.3, it says calculate the net electrostatic force experienced by sphere Q due to P and R. So we want the net force that is experienced by Q due to this one and due to this one. So we'll calculate the force that this one exact on this and the force that this one exact on this. So we'll have those forces there. These are the forces that we're going to have. Right? Having those forces, having those forces, um, most especially in this right angle triangle, this is a right angle triangle. We'll calculate this one and calculate this. And then this resultant that they need is this one, which is, it's if you're looking here, we have the adjacent side of the angle and opposite of an angle, we need the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse, we're going to use the theorem of Pythagoras. Guys, once you have the, the, the charges are placed like this at a right angle, they're placed in two dimension. That means here, you're going to use the theorem of Pythagoras, right? Now, let's write it here at the bottom 6.2.3 so i'm going to calculate the force of what of p on q using the formula that says q1 times q2 over r squared and then we substitute what is the force of p the force of p is uh, okay let me start with k it's 9 times 10 to the power 9 and the force of p it's 1 times 10 to the power uh, negative 9 um, times 10 to the power times 10 to the power 9 and then the force of Q is the same it's 1 times 10 to the power negative 9 and we divide by the distance <coughs> the distance here it's 40 um, it's 40 so 40 when we divide 40 by 100 it's going to be 0 0.40 square and then the answer, when you punch that in the calculator, the answer there, it will be um, 9 times 10 to the power 9 um, times 1 to the power 9. And the answer there, the answer there, it will be, it will be 5,625. 5,625 times 10 to the power negative 8 newtons and the direction for that the charge of P the force of P on Q it's going to the right now we are calculating now the force of what of R on Q and then it's going to be 9 times 10 to the power uh, 9 times 10 to the power 9 times um, the charge um, Q, it's 1 times 10 to the power uh, negative 9 times 8 times 10 to the power negative 9 um, all divided. The distance between there is 25, so it's going to be 0, 0,25 when you convert square. And the answer for that. Um, when you punch that in the calculator, it's 1, 1,152 um, newtons times 10 to the power, not newtons, sorry. Uh, 1, 1,152 times 10 to the power negative uh, 6 newtons. And the direction for that force, the force of R on Q, it's downwards. It's downwards. So now we have... Um, as I've mentioned earlier, we have the adjacent, we have the hypotenuse. We, we have the adjacent, we have the opposite, we want the hypotenuse. So we're going to use the theorem of Pythagoras. So we're going to say F res is equal to square root F of what? Of R on Q. 
two square plus the force of P on two square. And then we substitute. When we substitute, we substitute the two forces. So it's going to be the force of R on two is 1,1152 times 10 to the power negative 6 square plus uh, 5,625 times 10 to the power negative 8 square. So when you put that in the calculator, um, the answer will be 1,15 times 10 to the power negative 6 newtons. So that's the resultant there. That's the hypotenuse in the right angle triangle. So now um, the, 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 the hypotenuse would always come with an angle, which is the direction. You say theta is equal to 10 negative to the power. Um, it's going to be, um, when you use t th theta there, uh, theta is, uh, um, it's going to be taller. So it's opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent, the opposite there, um, over adjacent, it's a force of, it's going to be 1,152 times 10 to the power negative 6 divided by 5,625 times 10 to the power negative 8. And then that will give us 87,2 degrees and therefore we conclude therefore the magnitude the magnitude of of resultant force is um, is 1,15 times 10 to the power negative 6 newtons at at, an, at a direction of what? 